Southeast Georgia and the Low Country. Well, sometimes we have pictures and sometimes we have music and today <laughs> there we are. It is six o'clock. It is Tuesday morning. We're going to get straight to your weather with meteorologist Jonathan Myers. Jonathan, you said the weather's kind of all over the place. It today. is. This morning we're seeing low 50s for Hampton and 74 for Jessup mm -hmm. right now. So it all depends on where you are. We, we are seeing some mild temperatures and some areas of dense fog too as we start things off. Let's get right to that forecast this morning out the door for school. We will not need that umbrella this morning, but probably will need it later today with showers developing for inland areas around lunch time and we'll see those showers will be likely, especially along the coast there after school today. Highs in many areas will be into the mid 70s later this afternoon, so it will be a mild afternoon with plenty of humidity throughout the day and look at the current visibility. Boy, it is foggy out there in Metter this morning. Also from Statesboro all the way up into places like Sylvania and Hampton and uh, Ridgeland now is reporting visibility about a mile and a half over to Hilton Head. So you notice those areas that in that gray shading where we're seeing some of that Apache uh, dense fog and live radar is showing everyone dry this morning. Not seeing a whole lot of rain. Maybe one little shower just popped up there uh, just south of a hazel hearse and the rain chances for today mainly later this afternoon. The evening we will see a good chance and also Wednesday late afternoon, especially Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. That'll be the best time in the rain. That's why that high chance of rain for Thursday morning, probably about middle part of the morning on Thursday. All the rain will be out of here and we'll see dry conditions by the end of the week. But it's looking rather unsettled the next couple of days. I'll detail it and show you how those rain chances and the chances of rain rolling through later today will impact your maybe afternoon and evening commute. Those details in less than 10 minutes. Jonathan, thank you. It's 602 and a federal judge's new order means Georgians will now have to wait even longer to officially learn who its next governor will be. WJCL Stephen Moody joins us live right now to explain what that new deadline for certifying the election is. Plus, what else is in that judge's order? Stephen? Good morning. The race for Georgia's next governor will continue until at least this Friday. That comes after a 56 page federal order. Now, here's how it all breaks down. That order from federal judge Amy Totenberg prevents the Secretary of State's office from certifying the election until Friday. It also directs state and local officials to conduct a review of many of the provisional ballots. This comes after a lawsuit was filed following last Tuesday's election. It applies to all of Georgia. Now, another part of this ruling requires the state to explain exactly why ballots were rejected. It also wants the state to set up a hotline so voters can find out if their provisional ballots were counted. Now, the campaign manager for Democrat Stacey Abrams say that they have enough uncounted votes to force a runoff, but representatives for Brian Kemp say that this race is over, and even if all of the uncounted votes went in her favor, he would still win. Reporting live here in Savannah, Stephen Moody, WJCL 22 News. Stephen, thank you. Well, Georgia's Secretary of State is also ordering county election officials to count absentee ballots, even if voters didn't include their year of birth. Secretary Robin Crittenden says election officials can accept absentee ballots if the other information can verify the person's identity. She sent this guidance to election leaders yesterday. Well, remember, you can get all of your latest Commitment 2018 headlines when you download our free WJCL 22 News app, when you head over to our website, WJCL.com, or when you visit our Facebook page. And remember, Good Morning America also will be following the latest election news coming up at 7 o'clock. That's right after our show is done. It's 604 and the wildfire disaster in California is now the deadliest in state history. At least 44 people have been killed. Hundreds of others are missing and thousands of firefighters are battling the flames. President Trump is now approving a federal disaster declaration for three counties in the state. This morning we're hearing more stories of people getting out of the fire zone. Just constant explosions and cars are trying to go around on the side and bursting into flames and people are getting out of their burning cars and running down the middle of the road. Well, the heavy winds are not helping the situation. There are gusts of more than 70 miles per hour in that area. And volunteers with South Carolina chapter of the American Red Cross are on their way to help people affected by the California wildfires. So far, six volunteers from South Carolina are deployed. Three of them are helping with the so-called campfire, while others are there helping with the fires in Ventura County. Those volunteers are providing hot meals, moving supplies, and helping people in shelters. The South Carolina Red Cross also has a dozen volunteers assisting with recovery efforts after Hurricane Michael and Florence. Well, a Savannah woman is being hailed a heroin this morning after a family says she got them out of their house just before it caught fire. Now, that woman, Victoria Whittington, was driving along 37th Street Saturday morning when she saw a vacant house on fire. 
She quickly called 911 to report it, but she also worried that fire might spread to a neighboring house, so she alerted the people inside and even helped them get out. Sure enough, that fire did eventually spread to that house. Like you're like a sister to me. I mean, like what she did, it's like, I don't know who else would have done that, you know? I mean, like I hope my sister would do that for someone else, but just like, like she's just my sister now. And I told her, I'm like, she's an honorary Greenwood. I just like, we love her. We're glad to say nobody got hurt in that fire. The Red Cross helping those folks get back on their feet. Firefighters still trying to figure out how that vacant house caught fire. Well, this time of year keeps many people busy as they prepare for the holiday season. Unfortunately, it's also a demanding time for first responders as they tend to see an uptick in house fires. That's why the Bluffton Township Fire District wants to remind you to be extra careful as the temperatures outside start to drop. First, they want you to know if it has heat, give it three feet. If you're using a portable or space heater, make sure it has at least three feet of clear space in all directions. Don't store anything on top of it and place it on a hard, non-flammable surface. Now, if you're frying up a turkey next week, make sure your deep fryer is away from your house and not in a garage or a wooden deck. And for all the other fixings, make sure you don't leave them cooking in the kitchen unattended. Also, if you're in a building you think may be on fire, the department says don't take any chances. You know, it's just too... Uh, risky not to do that, not to practice at the very least, but simply get out, let the fire department come and help. Um, we don't arrest people. We don't find people for false calls. We're happy to come out and meet our neighbors and those that we swear to protect. Uh, we'd much rather come out for nothing than come out for something. Another big reminder from Bluffton Fire, check your smoke alarms. It's important to make sure they're working and have fresh batteries. Well, people who live in one area of Beaufort County will soon have quicker access to emergency medical care. Workers broke ground yesterday on the new Tidewatch Emergency Center. It'll be located on Okatee Highway and will feature a state-of-the-art emergency room and trauma center. Now, local leaders believe this new emergency center will save lives. ...to residences in Sun City, but really all along Highway 170. From Pritchardville to Bluffton to Okatee to north of the Broad, we will have access to physicians when needed, and we're excited about that. That emergency center is set to open next summer. Well, if you're looking for beach parking on Hilton Head, those passes go on sale today. They are $30 each for Hilton Head residents, and they're valid until December 31st, 2020. The passes allow you to park at the locations right here on your screen. You can purchase them starting at 8 o'clock this morning at Hilton Head Town Hall or at a Hilton Head Facilities Management Division office. Well, the City of Savannah plans to restore its more than 100-year-old City Hall. A recent assessment of the building showed damage, wear, and tear. Restoration would include areas such as the lobby, rotunda, stairwell, hallways, and windows. It would also include electrical and mechanical upgrades. Alderman Tony Thomas agrees it's time to freshen up the building. Significant building to the history of Savannah. It's actually the focal point for when folks roll into town and when you're coming across the bridge, that's what you see. And of course, when you come in from the airport, you see it uh, on the plane coming in. Um, I think it's important to the public for both our residents um, and people that live here that we have a, a beautiful and well-maintained building that is our center of government. Estimates for the renovations are nearly $3 million. Funding would come from other buildings that the city council has sold.